So the goal is to come to the proof. And since I had so much time in the previous lectures to make all the necessary preparations, I think, I hope I will be able to, to give you many, many details, not only the ideas I used to, to give all the ideas of the proof in, in, in shorter, much shorter talks. This time, I think uh, I will be able to, to give you even technical details so that, as I said, if interested, uh, you just can look in, in, in the articles and uh, reconstitute everything. Okay, so first of all, let me recall what we explained uh, yesterday. This was the Kobashic in correspondence. So X, X was uh, a complex surface. And uh, with a Godichon metric, Godichon metric G. And using this Godichon metric, we introduced the, Go the Godichon degree defined by G as a morphism of three groups defined on pick with values in R. And using this degree map, we introduce stability. OK, so on the other hand, we consider a Hermitian, a Hermitian two bundle over X. And uh, we introduced the moduli space first of stable uh, holomorphic structures on E, inducing a fixed holomorphic structure, uh, calligraphic D, on the terminant line bundle. So D is just that of E. This is a Hermitian line bundle, naturally. And we fixed the holomorphic structure on this differentiable line bundle. So again, you see this convention, which is very useful. Uh, reserve calligraphic letters for holomorphic bundles and Roman letters for differentiable ones. This makes everything very clear. So. You also can consider the moduli set of polystable structures. So here we have, of course, an inclusion. This is, as I said, as I said, the moduli space of holomorphic structures on E inducing D calligraphic holomorphic structures on the determinant. I explained yesterday why, why we do this, as I said, since the classification of holomorphic bundles, line bundles, is considered to be a solved problem. We have the group PICAR, PIC, which classifies holomorphic line bundles. Makes no sense to vary the determinant line bundle. We fix it, and we let vary only the holomorphic structure with, determi with fixed determinant. And here it's the same. However, here we don't have a complex space structure. We don't even have a topology. But we can define the moduli set of uh, here. Let me, of course, complete with what was obviously missing. Stable, yeah? this ST comes from stable. And this time. I look at polystable holomorphic structures. The rest is the same. However, what means moduli space? This means, again, moduli or moduli set, I said. 
What does this mean precisely here? This means um, modulo a complex gauge group. And this gauge group, what I can do? What is the natural symmetry on this space of holomorphic structures on a fixed bundle? It's very easy. You compose with automorphisms, differentiable automorphisms of E. Yeah? So we, and uh, then you get a natural action of which group? So of this group, because I want to keep fixed the holomorphic structure on the determinant. So I use only SLE automorphisms. OK, so what I also mentioned yesterday, that uh, this is open. Here we have an open embedding here. And this is all, all, uh, already a complex space, but in general not Hausdorff. Um, this open set is Hausdorff. Yeah, so this is Hausdorff. Okay. Now, what we can do, we can consider A to be the churn connection of the, of the pair D, we have a fixed allomorphic structures, D on the determinant, and that H. So we have a Hermitian structure on this allomorphic line bundle, so we have a churn connection. And then we have a natural assignment. What you can do, if you have now an ASD connection, projectively ASD connection, defined uh, in within gauge theory, as I explained, I can regard the 0, 1 component of the covari covariant derivative, d bar a, so this is the 0, 1 component, component f d a, and then the corresponding holomorphic structure. Maybe I can take this opportunity since uh, Vitel Bo mentioned this class of sheaves defined by linear PDEs, and the question come, came from the, from the uh, audience, uh, why? You see here very well what happens, a very good example of such a sheaf, namely what you do, you interpret this d bar a as an, a differentiable operator for smooth sections in E, and you look at local solutions. The local solutions will be holomorphic for this bundle. So in fact, with this operator, we can go directly to the locally free coherent sheaf corresponding to our bundle. Yeah, you, look, you, 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 can, you can omit, the, in fact, the bundle itself. You can go directly from this operator to the locally free coherent sheaf. Yeah, which you know that. Uh, in holomorphic category, the data of holomorphic bundle, vector bundle, in fact, is equivalent to the data of a locally free coherent sheaf. You have two equivalent points of view. Okay, so this assignment induces a bijection. We said from the, the M, A, S, D, our trajectory our moduli space of projectively ASD instantons. So this is called Kobayashi Hitchin in the moduli space, moduli set a priori of polystable structures uh, restricting to a real analytic isomorphism. Here I take the reducible ones and we know that this is uh, so that if we don't the H star here uh, in M stable D of E like this, and this is real analytic. Real analytic. This is. 
So this is, in fact, uh, let's say, uh, the theorem which has been stated yesterday. Okay. Now we see that from this diagram that uh, stable bundles correspond to irreducible instantons. By instanton, I always mean uh, projectively ASD connection. I will use now uh, this terminology to simplify the, my statements. So. The irreducible instantons correspond to stable bundles and the reductions to split polystable. To split polystable. So this gives you a simple way to understanding, for instance, the reductions as direct sum of, of line bundles, as I mentioned yesterday. So there are here two things which should be uh, explained. So if you have, if you want to test stability, so our goal will be to try to describe these uh, moduli spaces here with complex geometric methods, means. So we want to classify bundles, holomorphic bundles, and to distinguish the stable ones. This is what should be understood. No? You see, on the right hand, we are within the complex geometric category. As I said, here it's uh, global analysis. It's difficult. Here, with complex geometric methods, you can do something. Okay, so you see, if you have, so let E now be holomorphic two bundle, two bundle over X. We want to test stability. We want to test stability. Stability, what does it mean? So E is G stable if uh, one has the deck GL is strictly smaller than uh, big G, half of the degree of G for every sheaf monomorphism. Sheaf monomorphism. Sheaf. Again, I, I use here, you see the fact that I had this morning the introduction about uh, the theory of sheaves is, uh, was somehow very useful for me. So here we have a sheaf. So in fact, you understood that automatically I make, let's say, uh, I pass from from bundles to associated uh, locally free sheaves. Yeah, so when I say sheaf monomorphism, what I mean automatically I replace L and and E with the corresponding locally free. Uh, uh, sheaves of locally defined holomorphic sections, yeah, I, and uh, I, I give a, a consider sheaf monomorphism of this type. Now it suffices. It suffices to test, to 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 check uh, this inequality. This inequality for such monomorphisms with torsion-free quotient. For such monomorphisms. With torsion-free quotient, quotients. You see here, I cannot avoid this using uh, classical theory of, uh, of core and sheaves and of bundles. But I think anyway, here it's a very popular and uh, a subject here in Grenoble, so maybe it's a good thing. So in other words, if you have such, uh, so EDEST, it's sufficient to test the in uh, inequality. So for exact sequences, of the form 0, L, E, and here you'll have a quotient. And now comes a very important remark. If the quotient is torsion-free, necessarily, necessarily we have the following form, M tensor EZ, where 0, where L, M 
are line bundles, holomorphic, of course, holomorphic line bundles on X. And Z is, is a locally complete, locally complete intersection of dimension zero. So Z is a complex subspace of X, very, uh, very careful here. So of dimension zero, this means points, but points with ring structures, the ring structure. So you see uh, there are, even if you have only one point, yeah, this, this, this one point has very complicated, might have very complicated structures of a complex space. Yeah, so for instance, you can, you can, you can cut a, a double line with a triple line and you get set theoretically a point, but the ring space structure will be very complicated. And a locally complete intersection means precisely an example of this type. You just, you take the local intersection of two curves defined by only, each curve by only one equation, but which might be very, very, very singular, very degenerate. So uh, stability must be checked only for exact sequences of this type. It's very easy to prove what I said here. You see, if you do have torsion, you can replace L by a bigger line bundle. You take the pre-image of the torsion yeah, in E, and you get a bigger uh, line bundle which has torsion-free, sub-line sub bundle, which, which will have torsion-free quotient. And if, it, that if the quotient is torsion-free, you can prove that necessarily it, uh, it will have this, uh, this form. The quotient will have this form. Uh, so you see, this already is very encouraging because it gives you the impression then to understand uh, rank two bundles on complex surfaces. What you have to control very well are the line bundles and the zero dimensional subspaces of X and then to look at extensions, which are locally free. Unfortunately, in non-algebraic complex geometry, this is not sufficient. And it's not sufficient because E might, so possibly, will not have any sub proper subsheaf at all of, of lower rank, I mean, of, of rank one. So let me write it this carefully now. So remark, if E is not filterable, now maybe a definition first. E is filterable if it admits a subsheaf, a coherent subsheaf of rank one, of rank one. Of course, this is the good definition for rank two. Yeah? For, if, for, for bundles of higher rank, this will be more complicated, of course, but with bundles of rank two, this is what filterable means. If A is not filterable, then there is no inequality to check. We have nothing to check. This means that E will be G-stable. For and this for every Gaudi show metric, metric G. So uh, if uh, E is uh, filterable, if E is filterable, then my remark, what I explained to you, is uh, that E can be written as an extension of this type, and the stability can be checked only for these situations. However, careful, the same bundle can be written in general as extensions of this type in several different ways. So it's, it's, not, uh, it's not sufficient to check only for only one exact sequence of this type, but you have to look at all possible, let's say, presentations of E as central, ta uh, central uh, term of an extension of this type, and this might be very complicated. 
Okay, so uh, there is uh, another here problem which I want to, to point out is that uh, if, let's say proposition, uh, if B1 of X is odd, which is the case for non-Calarian surfaces, then one can prove that the following cohomology spaces are naturally isomorphic. So then one has isomorphism of this type, H2, here. So this is a instanton. This is the corresponding bundle, which will be polystable, yeah. thanks to Kobashic in correspondence. And uh, so the H2, the corresponding H2, are, are, are the same, which is very important because if you remember, uh, this H2 was uh, a source of complications in the description of the local models. So as soon as H2 was zero, then we had simple descriptions, simple local models, also for the reductions. Yeah? This is, was the condition we needed to give this tubular, this, this beautiful tubular neighborhood theorem around the tori of reductions, yeah, using cone bundles over the tori. And this is very important because uh, with complex geometric methods, we can compute these spaces. So this is not easy. This is proved in my articles. But anyway, with known methods, this is a comparison result, which is, does not hold in the Calarian situation. Though somehow in Calarian, some, some, some uh, let's say, properties become simpler in the non-Calarian framework, yeah, at least. Pardon? N0. N0. This is the trace-free endomorphism. Thank you very much for the question. Trace-free endomorphisms. If you have a, we have a, um, a bundle, holomorphic bundle, you take the sheaf of endomorphism. Well, now a case will be a, a sheaf of rank 4. The trace-free, the sheaf of trace-free endomorphisms yeah, will be, a, so, a, a bundle, a holomorphic bundle of rank three. Yeah. So this is, uh, let's say, the holomorphic three bundle of trace-free endomorphism of E. It's just operations with holomorphic bundles. You can make home, you can make uh, tensor products, symmetric powers, and so on. OK. Now, come back to the class 7 surfaces. But only what we need. What we need. So what we know about class 7 surfaces? Uh, we know that, by definition, Kodaya dimension of x, so x, I take x class 7 for the moment, with no minimality imposed. That by definition, I know that Pg of x is 0. So I recall that Pg is just the dimension, if you want, h0 of kx. Yeah, take the opportunity to fix the notations. kx is the holomorphic canonical line bundle, or if, if you prefer, is omega to 0 x. So the blind bundle of holomorphic forms of highest rank, of highest degree. Uh, yeah, of course. Of course, this is true, because Kodaya, Kodaya dimension uh, minus infinity implies, in particular, so implies that all, all the powers of Kx uh, are, are, have no uh, non-trivial sections. So in particular, the first one, Pg0. But using the book of Bart Peter the van der Ven, where the authors prove identities between topological and analytical invariants of complex surfaces, in the case B1 odd and B1 e even, uh, this implies B plus is zero. And this is precisely what I mentioned many times in the other lectures. I said, careful, the class, that this class of surfaces, uh, from the differential topological point of view, 
uh, are four manifolds with negative definite intersection form. So with B plus is zero. And all these complications I mentioned, for instance, the appearance of the tori of reductions and the fact that we cannot get rid of them by perturbing the metric, all these complications so will, will also will necessarily uh, uh, has, have to be addressed if one wants to understand the Donaldson theory of surfaces. So B plus is zero. But if B plus is zero, the intersection form is definite. One can apply Donaldson theorem. and uh, deduce that the intersection form is standard over Z. This means that it exists, uh, it exists a base E1, EB, basis, base, 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 in H2XZ over torsion, uh, such that AI, AJ is minus delta AJ. Now, it's not difficult to prove that changing signs, signs if necessary, one can assume that C1 of KX, this is precisely minus C1 of X, decomposes as the sum from E1 to B from A EI. You see here, of course, you notice that I denoted by B, this is a very useful notation, the second Betty number of X. You see? Now, I don't want here to, to insist on topological details. Of course, if you want, I can give you the proof. But the point is that using the fact that C1, this chain class, is an integral lift of the second stiefel Whitney class of the four manifold. So uh, this will follow, this it will imply that the decomposition of, the, of, of, of C1 of Kx or of X with respect to the Donaldson basis, EI, will have only odd coefficients. Only odd coefficients. On the other hand, we know that uh, uh, C1 of Kx by the square is minus B. We know this. These are known identities, old, let's say, known uh, topological invariants of these surfaces. And we know that this churn number is precisely the Betty number, minus the Betty number. So using this fact, then one can uh, prove that the decomposition of C1 of Kx will necessarily have plus or minus 1 as coefficients. And if you have minus one, we change the sign of the corresponding EI, and then the chain, changing the basis, and if, if this happens, you can assume that all coefficients are positive, and this determines uniquely the Donaldson basis up to order. Yeah? So for us, Donaldson basis for X will always mean a, a basis in H2XZ, uh, with the stand with uh, these identities, this is the fact that the basis is standard with respect to the intersection form, and uh, such that this also holds. What we also know, the, no the neuron severity group of X coincides with H2XZ. Neuron severity, you know, these are the integer classes which are represented by uh, forms of type 1, 1. Or if you want, there are the chain classes of holomorphic line bundles. Here, uh, you get all H2XZ. I can easily prove that. And also, we know that P0 of X, this I also mentioned, can be identified with C star. And we also, I recall, you know how the Gaudichon degree acts on P0. So, on P0 uh, of L zeta. If you choose, uh, if you choose, uh, if you uh, cho uh, choose uh, correctly the identification here, you can prove that this uh, holds where the constant is positive. Georges prefers a negative constant, but anyway.
one, so the point is anyway, the sign doesn't depend on G. It's the same, so if you ch choose correctly the identification, you must, you can assume that it also is positive. Okay, so these are the known facts about class seven surfaces we need. I think I mentioned everything, yes, I did mention all that I need. However, I want to, just to simplify my, my, my last lecture, but in a, let's say, in an honest way. So I just simplify avoiding technical difficulties. But the results with the same ideas work in general. And my simplification is, I will assume that there is no torsion in H2. The torsion, if you look at the coefficients formula in algebraic uh, topology, we see that the torsion from H2 comes from the torsion of homology one. So we'll assume for simplicity that the torsion from H of H1 xz, which is the same as the torsion of cohomology two, uh, is zero. This means we know that the Betty number, this, the, the, the Betty number is one. So this will imply that we have here an isomorphism, H1 xz is z, they have no torsion left in the homology. Yeah? We'll assume that for simplicity. And you see what are the first consequences. It's not pleasant to work with classes modulo torsion. Yeah? So as soon as I made this simplification, there is no torsion here, so EI will be honest cohomology classes. It's, it's much easier to work with uh, cohomology classes than with cohomology classes modulo torsion. Yeah, this is, you see already, the first simplification. But there is another simplification. Uh, you have, if this I is true, then you have only one non-trivial ep epimorphism from H from homology one with values in Z2. So I will denote by rho the unique epimorphism Z with values in plus minus one, which is isomorphic with Z2. You remember that we needed this, uh, this morphism because, you know, remember, the, such a row defines an involution on the moduli space. <laughs> Holomorphically, this involution now has a very simple and natural description. With rho, you can build a flat holomorphic line bundle. Yeah, you, you know, so you have a representation in the fundamental group, then you look at uh, the corresponding double cover, and there you consider the trivial line bundle, and you factorize the trivial line bundle on the double cover by, uh, by the involution acting on the double cover using rho, using rho. And you get a non-trivial line bundle on X. This will be in peak naught of X, which is, but will be not trivial. However, its, its power will be trivial. So it's a square root of the trivial line bundle, but it's a non-trivial square root. And now we have our old involution defined, let's say, in a complicated way in, in, in a gauge theory has now a very simple description. So E, E in L rho, this is the involution, tensor product with L rho, this is an involution on, uh, on all the moduli spaces of type M, S, A, E. Yeah? So you, tense, you see the point is that make a tensor product with L rho will not change the determinant because if you compute the determinant of the tensorized bundle, you, you'll get L rho square, which is trivial. So this operation doesn't change the determinant. Very important. Okay, so this is done. And now comes the point. The existence, uh, don't forget, so, our goal, the goal of this lecture, of the series of lectures, is uh, existence of curves. And I've told you, we'll prove existence of curves using Donaldson theory and Donaldson moduli spaces. And now the question is, okay, 
which moduli spaces will be used and how. What is the relation between Donaldson moduli spaces and curves? There seems to be none. The moduli space, so uh, an important, let's say, let's put it like this, an important This is very vague, the important moduli space of bundles or instantons, if you want, on class 7 surfaces. So very vague. The point is that these are moduli spaces which produce the results. And up till now, I wasn't able and I'm not the only one working on the subject, but I know that at least two other people tried with other bundles, with other moduli spaces, and uh, apparently it doesn't, it doesn't work. So, what I take x is a, in the class 7. I take e with the following invariant, c2 of e is 0, and the determinant of e of e will be k, yeah? I, I skip kx, yeah, this is k, kx. And you understood what this should mean. I use Roman letter. So this is the underlying C infinity uh, line bundle of kx, of Donald Mach line bundle. And the moduli space I need, which will be denoted by m, will be M polystable. Uh, and now I can distinguish precisely the holomorphic structure K of E. And if you want, via, via Kobayashi, we have a geometrical description. This is MA defined, as I've told you, as a Chern connection, uh, ASD of E. This is Donaldson theory, this is complex geometry. We need both descriptions. And only combining the two points of view, we can come to results. And not meantime, to understanding the moduli spaces, at least for, for small b2. So we see we will do it together, so we still have uh, 50 minutes. What I'm going to do now, I will give you a priori information about, modul about these moduli spaces, but this will be a joke. I mean, very easy, because it will be formal consequences of our preparations. I just apply them to this situation. We'll be surprised to see how many things will, will follow, I mean, from the general theory. Somehow it's interesting to see. We're always surprised, because we see our base is an unknown class 7 surface. We don't know practically anything, just several invariants. Yeah, we don't know much about this surface. But about the moduli space, defined in this way, at least for small b2, we can come with the result. For instance, can say the moduli space is a disk. It's a disk. And proving this, meantime, will prove that, the, that, the, the, that there is a cycle of curves. So this is uh, the plan. So uh, I'm sure we'll be successful with this plan. So what can be said? First of all, the discriminant which played an important role is precisely B, B, which comes from minus C square. So I, I, this is 4C2E, this is 0, minus C, C1 of E squared. And because we chose C1, and this is C1 of E, C1 of K, I explained to you already that the power is precisely minus B. So this is B. Uh, and if you look at the expected dimension of the moduli space, so the real expected dimension, as I defined, uh, this uh, is uh, 2 times b. The other clamor, uh, bracket excuse me, uh, vanishes. The other bracket was b1 minus b plus minus 1. This vanishes. We say this. And what we have here is the 
b, b, this b2 of x, you have to get a, a constant with this. And this is the complex expected dimension. The complex expected dimension. The half, and this b. You see, this already is a warning. Means if you try to apply the theory to higher b for higher b2, you'll have to face uh, a higher dimensional moduli space, higher dimensional moduli spaces. Okay, um, so we have the expected dimensions. Uh, what can be said about the uh, reductions? The reductions. Now we are expert in reductions, and we know that uh, the reductions are um, associated to topological splittings of E. Uh, so, and now, so we can ask, what are the topological splittings of E? So what are the possible, look at the topological decompositions of the type L plus uh, L orthogonal, and you see what are the possibilities. And uh, using the Donaldson basis, if you decompose C1L as sum of Xe Bi, uh, then C1 of L orthogonal, so this L orthogonal must be, of course, isomorphic to K tensor uh, L dual, because the terminal must be K. You see, so here you necessarily get some, because K is sum of Ei, 1 minus xi ei, and uh, then c2 of, of e uh, will be something of the type xi. You have to change the signs because ei square are minus 1. They are pairwise orthogonal, c1. So here you get xi, uh, xi minus 1. And this can be 0. Only if all these x i's, the point is that you see this, this, uh, this bracket on the integers is always non-negative. And uh, this means that the sum, if the sum vanishes, then all, uh, all terms must vanish. So this means that all the x i belong to 0, 1. So uh, for all i. This means that, in fact, what you have to do is to distinguish a subset of one of the index set 1b. Namely, you take uh, the subset defined by the indices y for which xi is non-zero. You define the corresponding cohomology class as the sum of ei when i i. So e, this is just just a sum of Donaldson classes with no repetition allowed. CI, and these are the possible chain classes of L. Okay, so this means that topological splittings, splittings of I correspond to uh, classes CI, to classes CI, uh, where I is in a uh, uh, let me denote by I naught this maximal uh, set of indices. You take all indices. So I in I naught. Modulo, of course, uh, the equivalent CI, CI bar. Let me denote by I bar the complement I naught minus I. And why modulo this equivalence? Because, of course, uh, in the, this topological splitting, you can switch the roles and you obtain essentially the, the same decomposition. The same decomposition, the order doesn't matter. Uh, so what is the conclusion? The conclusion is that you have two power b minus one topological splittings. Splittings of E. And for every topological splitting, we know, we prove together, that you get a torus of reductions. Torus will be of dimension B1, tells you the theory. In our case, it will be a circle. And you get 2 minus 1 circles of reductions. Yeah, this is what, we, what you get. One can also classify 
try to classify the filterable bundles in our, in our moduli space. So what are the filterables? With the same methods. The problem is to see what happens with other monomorphisms. We have to come out to, to control all possible monomorphisms with values in A. And so the question is, question, can one write A as a bundle extension? in a different way, in a different way. You see, because this is, why well, this is a very natural question. Because if this happens, we'll have to check the, the, the inequality, the required inequality for stability for all the, these other, possible other uh, monomorphisms. Y you, you know that, uh, you see, for all other monomorphisms, we can reduce to, to, to an exact sequence of this type. So I showed you implicitly. So first of all, you can reduce to the situation where the quotient is torsion-free. And then, as I showed you, you can prove that Z is empty. You see? So these are, in fact, the only danger is that A might be a priori be written as a bundle extension in a different way. And then comes, uh, uh, let's say, an answer, which is, say, is surprising but it's, uh, let's say, very optimistical because it's the, probably the first moment when we see how we can we come close to curves, to the existence of curves. So the answer is the following. This is a question. The answer is yes. If it does, can one? So if, it, if, if one can, then X has a cycle of curves. So, in fact, we'll show that uh, A necessarily must be written in a different way as an extension, and then we'll apply this. Uh, so, this, uh, let's say this is the answer. Although it's very simple, let me call it proposition. You see? And why?
then h2 of n0 a is 0, always, for every class n in n, polystable or not. And this, what does it mean? This is wonderful. Because it tells you that this implies, first of all, implies that m is a smooth b-dimensional complex manifold at the stable points, at the points of m stable, at the stable points, we don't have reductions. And so M. so it has known known topology around the circle of reductions. And which are the local models around the circles of reductions? We know. There are cone bundles over these circles. Cone with basis projective spaces, topologically. So let's say I don't write it uh, because we have this. Known topology. And just remember, cone bundles with known basis, cone fiber bundles around the circles of reductions. You see, here you used my remarks at the beginning of this lecture. Yes, I have everything in mind, but probably you don't. I told you that. If, if B1 is odd, one can identify the H2 of the elliptic complex of the, of the instanton A to H2 of this endomorphism bundle, which you can compute. The other one you cannot compute. And now it's hard to believe, but we can prove that there is a cycle of curves. So the conjecture, and it, I mean, also the uh, uh, the main conjecture for B2 is 1. We can prove it together now because we have all the necessary ingredients. Uh, first of all, we can suppose, we can suppose, this is not a restriction. by results of Bukta himself and Lamarick. Lamarick wrote papers about uh, Golubchon degree, about effectiveness uh, and possibility in uh, on non-Kellerian surfaces. Yeah, it's, uh, it's these papers of Lamarie, which are very praised and appreciated, especially because they are written by school teachers. So I think only in France this uh, occurred. Uh, so I, I saw articles at such a high level written by, by, by teachers. I, I think they still sing like men. But anyway, many people were surprised. Uh, so one, we can suppose that. Now, uh, now, suppose that this is, so let's say, theorem, let x minimal, class 7, uh, let's say b2 is 1, and minimal, that x has a cycle. So, the, so because uh, now we have b2 is 1, we have a curve, it's sufficient of using the results of earlier class of Doma, which we saw the stuff of in this case, we have the particular proof. We want to understand our M. What we know from known pieces of M. Now I want to avoid the difficulties that Peter brought to write example to write here the most important thing. Uh, however, I'm also happy to do that. So we have only one 2 power 0 circle of reductions. Yeah? And they correspond to three polystable of this size, 
as you see very well why it's important. Here is the same for the pellet draw. Here L is in six knots. Yeah, we have only only one topological decomposition. Okay? With L is in three knots, and the point stability condition tells me that it's state G uh, of L must be half of uh, state G of K. And I told you that six stability, the level of stability they map on six on six knots are Now we can also look at M stable empty sets. So which are the stable bundles given by extensions of this type. Same term for L0. Same for zero. Again with the same C1 L uh, is C0. Again when L is in C not again. And uh, the stable. Yeah, so it means that this type is first we impose. More than, smaller than this G A. So we have this time an inequality for this degree map. Of course, you have to be careful because again, you might have here the same E might a priori have other kernels or other come with other assumptions that I apply. Fortunately, one can prove that in minimal case it is not the case. Yeah? So a priori. Dissecting maybe. When, when uh, the other kernel is k, yeah? we we'll see immediately. However, this does not disturb stability. So what I cl claim is yes, it might happen when we see that it does in fact, that such bundles uh, can be written in, in a different way as extensions, but this, however, with new presentations of the extensions, those disturb stability. Okay, so what you get uh, this inequality in, in star defines you a puncture open disk. So this is M stable empty set. And uh, you also have our old friend M stable one, which is A and A tensor L. What are the incidence relation between these things? One can very easily prove, as what you expect, uh, that uh, red circle of induction compactifies the disk uh, towards the outer boundary. So this one can prove easily. So what you get is this picture. And here you have A and its sister extension, A tensor L rho. This is what we have. And now what happens? The modular space must be compact. And everything must be smooth, excepting at the border points, at the, at the red points, where our local structure theorem gives you cone over T1, cone over, over T0, we say, so cone over a point. So our local structure theorem gives you precisely a boundary structure here, a collar around the circle of induction. These are, you see, the cones over T0, over P0. Okay. So you can see in this situation this uh, local structure theorem around the, stru around the torus of induction. You see it's a very simple situation how it fits. And now comes the point. Our involution acts by rotation here with uh, P, P, uh, with P. One can prove this. So this is P rho. So this means that this disk, so again, the modular space must be compact and must be uh, so, uh, compact, smooth, Riemann surface with only, uh, with only one circle as boundary. So this means that you necessarily have to compactify the disk. You must be, we must put a point in the center. We don't know which one, but there must be in the modular space a point which compactifies this disk. And careful, there is only 
one way to complexify a puncture disk to get a smooth, uh, a smooth curve. Yeah, to, to, to put the missing point where it's missing. So here you have a point, but that point must be fixed under during volition because of the power fix point here. So here you necessarily have. Oh, where did I want the blue? By the Brouwer fixed point theorem, we have a twisted reduction, a fixed point under L rho. So fixed point under this kind of conducting flow. And now comes the point. There are two possible answers. We have a dichotomy. So if yes, then of course X has a side point. Why? Because this means that A can be written in a different way as an extension, or is a twisted reduction. And we show that in both cases, if A, I know the problem, if A can be written as an extension in a different way, or If not, you have a contradiction. And I explained to briefly the contradiction, it's not difficult. And what is contradiction? Ah, this is the, the part which is difficult for higher B2, but it's very easy for B2 is 1. Consider the connected component of these points. So you see, your moduli space cannot have isolated points like that. We prove that. It has the structure of a, of a smooth Riemann surface. So this means that A cannot be alone. And the whole moduli space is compact. The only boundary points are the red points. So this means the connected component of A must be a Riemann surface. Yeah, so maybe both points are on the same component, doesn't matter. So consider the connected component, the connected component of A in M. And this Y will be closed, compact, and con uh, uh, contained in the stable part. And one can also uh, prove that uh, excepting the points A and uh, maybe this one, all the points will be non fixable You see, the a priori might happen. You know that a priori, there might be non fixable functions. What is the source of the contradiction? The source of the contradiction is that such a Y is an algebraic term because it's a Riemann surface. So Y is a Riemann surface, or closed Riemann surface. Riemann surface, so in particular algebraic, it's an algebraic term. And because I don't want to insist on technical details at the end of the last talk, but I give you the essential idea, it's not difficult. I got the contradiction in two steps. So I proved first that you have a classifying, so you have E classifying bundle, so people here are accustomed with the theory of holomorphic bundles of moduli space, you have a classifying bundle on the product on y times m. So here is the product. Here is y, you are in one surface, this is x. So you get here a bundle, E on this, such that the restriction 
function of, uh, of i uh, times x is precisely the bundle which corresponds to y. No? So here, if you have this included inclusion, this needed for every point in y, uh, we get a corresponding or isomorphic class of holomorphic bundle, stable holomorphic bundle E E Y. So you have this equation. And now the idea is to switch the role. To switch the role, so this means for every X here, we regard the restriction of the same bundle uh, or in the Y direction. And you get a meromorphic map in a moduli space of bundles over, over Y. Over y. Okay, and one can reduce the situation when these bundles over y are determined by stable. And the point is that the moduli space of say of, of bundles of stable bundles of sorry uh, Riemann surface is a projective array. And to get a map from it, which is a surface whose algebra dimension is zero, which is something very non-algebraic, in an algebraic sense, in an algebraic object, which is even in a projective object. So you can prove easily that this map is constant and to very easily got a composition. So the, what is here the essential point? Essential point is that as soon as you have an algebraic component in a moduli space of bundles over a manifold of algebraic dimension zero, this trick, so constructing a universal family and then switching the roles will give you a contradiction. This means that this picture is not allowed. You cannot have an algebraic connected component in the moduli space. This is forbidden. The only possibility in your dichotomy is the first one, which means that A must necessarily belong to the disk, to the known disk. And this we have seen with complete proof. This gives you a disk. And this is what it really happens. We check that for the known cut of surfaces. Excuse me for the delay. I think it's one minute delay. I will insist with another minute, but will not be mathematical. Will be the history of this proof. Many years ago, I think in 2004, I was invited in Grenoble by Professor de Mailly as a member of the jury of Nefton Pali, who is now in Paris. And very politely, Professor de Mailly uh, invited me also to give a talk because I didn't have a good topic. I remember that many years ago, many, many years ago, so maybe, I don't know, 96 or 97, or maybe late, I don't remember, I, I, I had proved that on an on a, uh, unknown class 7 surface with B2 is 1, the moduli space considered here is the disk. I had in mind that this is true. And I say, OK, this is a beautiful result. I can prove it in a talk in Grenoble. With, and I, 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 I went to Grenoble, I, the, tri the trip, without preparing my talk. I did it in the train, precisely what I did this week, in fact. This is why my first talk was not very good. So I prepared in the train the talk. And in the talk, proving the result, trying to prove the result, I noticed that there are stable bundles which don't fit on the disk, A and its sister, A and rho. The result of this is was that my talk in Grenoble was bad because I proved a very weak result. I proved that the moduli space only contains the disk as an open set. But I knew already that something very important must happen. Because this picture contradicts the intuition I had about these moduli spaces. The appearance of an algebraic connected component in the moduli space of, of bundles of a class was not, was not possible, was not possible. And I proved immediately that it cannot happen. So uh, the talk was bad, but in fact, my trip to Grenoble was extremely useful. Thank you very much.